Hello everyone, my name is Jay Valentino for those of you that are new, and this is my 1963 Chevy Impala build. So I first took off the radiator hose, which I ended up finding this weird yellow stuff, which I'm guessing would be maybe dried up coolant. I'm not too sure. Um, then I took off the little, I don't even know what it's called, but I took it off and just try to clean it out. But I figured out later on that the intake manifold just isn't savable, that I should just get another one. Next, I decided to take off the valve covers and trying to take those off because of it being sealed for so long was kind of a mission, but I ended up getting it. For those of you that are doing the same thing, uh, since I kind of want to make this a DIY, but like I'm still kind of learning as I go, there's four bolts. There's four bolts in total and two are on each side. I'm not too sure what the sizes are, but they're pretty easy to take off. <laughs> So the next morning I woke up and started to take as much as I could off. Um, I started with the alternator and the alternator was pretty easy to take off. It would have been a lot easier if I had a like one, uh, one fourth strength or a three eighth, but I was using a half the entire time and it was a bitch and you'll probably see why later on. Um, it was only like four bolts and they're pretty like, it was common sense basically just taking this off, um, just looking and seeing what connected to what. Um, I probably could have just taken the alternator off instead of the actual like hook that it holds on, but so this clip was basically just for you guys to see what I was working with. And if you guys see anything that I haven't definitely drop it down below. Um, I could use all the help I can get. So next was the carb. I wish I had gotten a better angle to show you guys actually like what was going on, but it wasn't a good angle. You guys couldn't see what I was doing, so I just spared you and I just cut it and just showed you me taking it or showed me taking it off. Um, this was the I don't even know what that is. I think that's like the I'm guessing like a gasket kind of. Um, took that off. I think it was pretty cool. I ended up figuring out that the intake manifold was actually cracked, so that's why I bought an entirely new one. Then we started taking it, uh, trying to take out the distributor, but the distributor cap would get like stuck on the firewall or like the firewall, like it's like a lip on the firewall. I don't know to keep the water from getting, from getting in there, I'm guessing. Um, and it would not fully come out. So I had to like, I had to really just, if I, if I had the tools to take out the engine, I, I would much rather have done that because it, it would have just been a lot easier. Um, but trying to take off, I didn't even film taking off the distributor cap or the distributor. Um, I missed it. But yeah, if you if you just pull it in a certain angle and then rotate it a little bit, it should just slide out. It'll take some work, but it should slide out. Right here, I'm explaining basically how to take it off because I couldn't figure it out. There's like the screws that hold it in. You uh, you turn it to the left, and then in the little hook on the bottom like comes out, and then that's how you take it off. We spent like 30 minutes trying to figure that out. So for those of you that don't know, this is held in by a gasket, the intake manifold. And the gasket is basically why I had to like pry it out with uh, the rubber mallet and the flathead. And then once you take it off, there's some gaskets on the right as well. Also, for those of you that are trying to do this is just like me, um, the intake manifold. The bolts are at a slant on some of them, so you need to have like a one fourth uh, drive or a one fourth uh, wrench or something small because trying to get to those with a with a half inch was such a bitch to get to, and I had to use like like a like pliers kind of to, to rotate it. Um, right here is a clip of how it looks. It was pretty bad. Uh, I bought whole new gases and I bought a whole new intake manifold, which I'm gonna be releasing a video pretty soon. And I don't even know if that's supposed to be like that. Like if it's supposed to be 
clogged like that but i was like I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be um as you can see in this video i started vacuuming it i'm pretty sure it's a harmless thing to do um if not let me know but i didn't want anything to get in there uh to get into the holes because i heard that's pretty bad and we ended up clogging them with uh with paper like uh paper towels so if you use the tool that I'm using here, it's uh, pretty easy to take off the rocker arms and the push rods. Um, push rods just slide out and I put the paper towels as you can see so nothing gets in. So next it was time to take off the, or at least loosen, uh, because it was getting late. So we just, I wanted to loosen the, the heads so that the next morning when I, when I come, they'll be ready and I could just take them off. But I didn't expect it to be this hard. Um, it took a lot of force and I definitely couldn't have done it by myself. Um, so him holding it was basically making it to where it didn't come loose and I could push it and it would stay st stiff on there because every time we try and do it it would either uh, just come straight off or literally it, it, it broke a socket and like stripped it like it, that's how tight it was so luckily I had a second socket on hand that, that actually worked and this one worked pretty well um, but yeah if you guys are if you guys are trying to do that uh, just be prepared. It takes a it takes a lot of force to do that Sounds pretty like common sense, but you're not going to be able to use a regular socket. So definitely invest into a breaker bar <laughs> Okay, so now if any of you guys are trying to take off an exhaust manifold, here is a trick that I used to kind of get it off. So for this one, um, it's got a nut and a bolt um, so that the bolt doesn't free spin. You got to have somebody which I, I, as you can see, I had a guy on top and then I was, I was uh, loosening the bolt from the bottom. Um, you have to have him pull up. Well, this is what I figured out is I asked him to pull up so that the force of him pulling wouldn't allow the, the bolt to free spin so that I could get it off because every time I try and spin it, it would just free spin and like it would do nothing. It wouldn't, it wouldn't tighten or loosen. So I asked him to pull it and then as, I, as he was pulling it, I was loosening it and then finally it ended up coming off and that the headers were probably the scariest thing because i was like fuck am i gonna be able to get this off i don't know it took me like two or three days to try and get it off and then the third day which you're watching right now is finally the day that i got it off and then that was literally the last thing that we needed was just those those two headers or exhaust manifolds and like i uh like i said if you guys have a one-fourth wrench or anything small you probably would have gotten it off a lot easier than than what I did but I'm j I was just using the tools on hand um, and yeah so that's why I was kind of a bitch for me but if you have the tools it'll probably be a lot easier for you so don't get discouraged <laughs> So finally, we are taking apart the the heads finally, and um, I didn't get a good shot 
as you can see um, of me actually taking them off so I just showed you this part but you basically take all those on the bottom off and then you take the the ones that were hard to get off that I was showing you in the last video you take those off as well and then the entire head should come off after you take off the uh, push rods so I just thought I should add something real quick if you guys are gonna do this get a box put a diagram on the box and then stab the push rods into the into the box and kind of keep it in order um, I didn't do that I wish I did um, but you don't have to keep them in order the only thing you have to keep in order is the uh, rocker arms and but I've been told that the push rods don't have to be in order because it doesn't really matter just as long as they're the same size and not bent you should be good so after I've learned everything I kind of want to start making like actual real DIYs um, because there's not many out there on like Chevy Impalas I've, I've tried to look and there's none so I kind of want to learn everything I can and then and then kind of just put it all out there for those of you who have project cars like me uh, or the same project car as me so once you get the push rods out uh, get a friend to help you because it's heavy to lift up by yourself um, after that then the next clip I just clean the cylinders but I just wanted to cover this real quick thank you guys for waiting such a long time I appreciate it um, I just got busy and caught up with life it's not an excuse and I kind of don't want to make it seem like it's one so that's why I'm not really going into detail what have like what's been going on but um, I I'm back to making videos I'm trying to stay more consistent and I'm trying to put out more for just you guys because uh this is something that i really want to do and i know it's something that you guys definitely want to see so more videos are definitely on the way and i appreciate you guys and your support mm -hmm.